they're going to say it. I thought you were going to say the straw, straw that stirs the drink. Oh, no, I did not. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to go reg Reggie on me. <laughs> so I got I to gotta ask you, though, taking you through your um, experience, when you were at Alabama and you were continuing to move up on that leadership ladder, if you will, and you were getting closer and closer to that national championship, and then you became a leader – your senior year, probably before that, right? Your junior year, but then you really became kind of the forefront of that leadership, the face of the one of the faces of that program in 2012, which is funny with the national championship. So that says a lot on you in a positive way. What steps were taken to become that leader? How did you adapt that growth mindset to eventually get to the point where you were one of the faces on and off the field of the University of Alabama softball program? You know, I, I, you don't do it alone, obviously. And yeah. I had so much guidance and mentorship from my coaches, even when I didn't realize I was being guided, guided and mentored by my coaches. Um, yeah. I had an assistant coach tell me my freshman year one time, uh, she held me accountable on something. She goes, I'm not going to treat you like the leader you are right now. I'm going to treat you like the leader I see you being in four years. Mm -hmm. And it was always this, it, you know, cause think about what that says to me right there, the freshman, it's like, Oh, you believe in me, you see something better in me. Like granted at the time she was holding me accountable, but look at how much of a positive light that shed on a young freshman self. Um, I had my class honestly to carry so much of that leadership load. There were six of us and we all stepped up in different ways. And I think so many times we have this idea of a leader of what the Hollywood-esque leader is, the rah-rah person in the huddle, the, the one with the C on their chest. But really sometimes the most impactful leaders are that number two and number three people that are kind of behind the scenes, checking in on the people who maybe are straggling a little bit or struggling. Like it is completely normal to struggle when you're not playing every game. And that's very difficult for a four-year starter, captain, whatever, to all of a sudden look at the sophomore that's, that hasn't played in two years and be like, oh, I can relate to you. Because they look and they're yeah. like, no, you can't. <laughs> you don't know what I'm feeling. So yeah. when you have a leader who wasn't a four-year starter, how that that maybe wins us the national championship that year, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think, uh, you know, it's a lot of things that came together, but uh, certainly being comfortable, being uncomfortable, like you can't just be comfortable and think you're going to be a great leader. You're going to yeah. just, you know, pat yourself on the back until you don't win. If you want to actually achieve something, there's going to be really difficult conversations that you're going to have to have and and things you do that you might not feel like doing, but you know have to be done. What were, I love picking your brain on, on these things. <laughs> what, what was the hardest conversation you had to have as a leader? What was your, the hardest moment you had when you were mm -hmm. in that leadership position? Sure. Um, first thing that comes to mind, honestly, and this was like, I felt like this was like my, like, okay, this is going to be a cast. Do you want to be a leader on this team or not? <laughs> and um, that light bulb moment. I was a sophomore, actually. And there was a senior on the team who would speak in the huddle a lot. And she cursed, which mm -hmm. is like no big deal. Um, but it was some of the verbiage she was using. We had some people on the team. Um, I, you know, I didn't realize this coming from New York. This individual was from California and I don't think she realized it either. It was, it was very much an awareness thing mm -hmm. that taking the Lord's name in vain sometimes is extremely yeah. offensive. Like the most offensive curse word you could possibly say to some people. It's, and again, it's like how people were wired when they were younger versus how they weren't wired. So I don't think she was aware that when she was trying to hype the team up, she was actually offending like six or seven people on the team. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, I, I hear that and I'm like, okay, we're either going to go on this entire season with a senior trying to lead and wondering like, why is this not working? And um, I remember just having a conversation with her and it wasn't like, Hey, you're doing this wrong. Figure it out. It was, Hey, I don't know if you're aware, you know, it's just, I think it's the way you say it, like getting to know your teammates and knowing okay, this approach will probably be the best because it's not going to feel good for her to hear this. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I think that was the hardest thing, but I remember thinking like, okay, do I want to feel comfortable or do I want to win a national championship? <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. And her, you know, but by her saying this, she didn't, you know, she was appreciative at the end of the conversation, but that was certainly going into it a little bit of a harder one to boast myself up for. <laughs> 